Today, we are going to compare two popular cameras, the Nikon D7200 and Nikon D5500. We are going to take a look at their features, who they are for, how they perform in various use cases, user experiences, and which one is the right one for you. Links to both of the cameras will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. The Nikon D7200 and the Nikon D5500 are two digital cameras that were officially introduced respectively in the 2nd of March 2015 and the 6th of January 2015. Let's take a look at how their specs compare to each other. We tested both cameras to assess their performance in different scenarios. Let's take a closer look at our ratings for each of them. Here are our ratings for the Nikon D7200. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it a 10 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Here are our ratings for the Nikon D5500. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it a 9 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Next, we will take a look at some sample photos from the Nikon D7200 and the Nikon D5500. Keep in mind that these photos have editing done to them, so the result from your camera might be different. Let's start with the sample photos. Here are some sample photos from the Nikon D7200. And here are some sample photos from the Nikon D5500. Next, let's take a look at what other users of these cameras have to say about them. Here's what people have to say about the Nikon D7200. I have been on a DSLR journey, starting with the D80 and upgrading to the D90, D7000, and finally the D7200. My main motivation for upgrading has always been for better low light and high ISO performance. The D7200 has exceeded my expectations in this area, allowing me to maintain a high ISO while increasing my shutter speed for handheld shots. The color accuracy and saturation have also improved, and the Wi-Fi capability is a nice bonus. However, the camera falls short in the viewfinder and high ISO performance department, so I ultimately returned it in favor of AD700 or Sony A7S for better low light capabilities and raw support. I am very impressed with the condition of the equipment. It is accurately described and works perfectly. Here's what people have to say about the Nikon D5500. I recently purchased the Nikon D5500 as a replacement for my stolen Sony A6000. The D5500 offers better flash, a touchscreen LCD, and improved focus for my family and kid pictures. While the manual control is not as good as the A6000, the overall picture quality is sufficient for my needs. The size is bigger. I recently upgraded from my D5000 to the D5500 with an 18 to 140 mm lens, and I am amazed at the difference it has made. The camera body is lighter, more compact, and easier to use with a larger, higher-resolution LCD screen. The pictures it takes are stunning, especially in low-light conditions. The 18 to 140 mm lens is amazing and covers all my needs, but it is heavy. I also purchased the 35 mm prime lens, which is perfect for indoor and low-light shots. Overall, I highly recommend the D5500 with the 18 to 140 mm lens, but don't forget the 35 mm prime. To conclude, here are our overall ratings for both of these cameras. Nikon D7200. We will give it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. Nikon D5500. We will give it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. 